Welcome to a special abandoned Colorado. It is going to be a little bit different this time as the location we're going to doesn't actually have an abandoned building on it this time because that building no longer exists. But regardless, we would like to try to bring you along with us to at least find these locations. And what are those locations, Keith? All right, so today we're going to go try to find the old Nikola Tesla Experimental Lab location. You've seen any of the pictures with him sitting in the uh, like circle with the Tesla coil and lightning. That was taken here in Colorado Springs. So while we're in the park with the placard, we're actually going to try to find the original location. behind us and we'll kind of splice in some more footage so you can see uh, but it's the old Union Printers home and this one's pretty important to finding the location of Tesla's lab because as you'll see in this picture that's going to pop up on the screen you can actually see it in the background of Tesla's lab. Now today it is a little bit bigger isn't it? Alan? It is bigger they did add on to the building but this is still huge for us because now we have an official landmark of a building that was here at the time the lab was. The other part that's kind of difficult is, you know, with our modern roadways and buildings, that kind of thing, the landscape has changed quite a bit. And just from where we're at today, on the same grounds as the print station versus the original picture, you can tell that difference. This is part of the experience that you guys don't usually get to see is, you know, the amount of kind of finite things that we have to track down to be able to find these locations. And that's part of the reason we wanted to bring you here with us is we want to be able to kind of set you guys up to try to track this down yourself if you ever felt the need that you wanted to. Um, and this is just one of the stops on our journey that we're trying to take you on with us on trying to find this location. Yeah, sometimes in these investigations there's quite a few steps and today we're definitely going to show you those steps. kind of stop number two to kind of determine the location of this old you know experimental lab and while we at least had the old printer press uh, home in the background we kind of dug through some information and found that the old experimental lab it sat somewhere between the old printer press home and the Colorado School of Deaf and Blind and so we're like okay where is that so we've come down it looks like it is this location here there is definitely some older buildings off to our left and behind us. Uh, we can't get too close. It's gated off and we don't want to be breaking any laws. You know, trespassing is no good, but we're, I think we're getting closer. We're definitely narrowing it down. And those little bits of information that we have are so crucial to an investigation like this where we don't have a physical building left to actually try to hunt down. And it's, so, it's been fun. It's like a scavenger hunt. And that's exactly what it is. It makes it like a scavenger hunt. And you have to find all these little pieces of breadcrumb to be able to try to track down where that original lab stood. And that's why this was such an amazing piece of information for us was because, okay, we had the, the old printer press home up on the hill and then we found this here. And now from that, we're able to deduce an area of where this lab might have set. So what we're gonna do now is actually kind of start looking between here and that original stop we were on with you guys and see if we can't narrow this down any further or perhaps even find the hill where that stood. Yeah, I mean, it was said to have stood on the top of a hill. So we gotta go find a hill that's somewhere between this and somewhere that looks flat enough that at some point a building sat upon it. We've just crossed the street from the Colorado School of Deaf and Blind and like I said, the hill's right here, so I think we need to journey on up it because I think this is it. Let's go. All right, 
right, so this kind of brings us to our final location. And like Alan said at the beginning, the building is no longer here. Uh, so it's kind of a best guess estimation between the printer's home that we showed you earlier and the school of deaf and blind that we just came from. We've traveled to the top of the hill at foot in Kiowa, which is kind of the rough description we were given. And it does kind of make sense. I mean, it's flat, it's at the top of the hill. You can definitely see it would have been perfect for a building at one point. And it's kind of neat. I mean, it's weird because there's nothing here, but you kind of still get that feeling that it's weird to step in the same place that Tesla did. It is, especially when you look at it today. Mm -hmm. You know, you look around and it's just, uh, know everyday neighborhood and actually this direction uh, that we're facing is where the press is at over there and if we were to jump on Google Maps uh, satellite view then we could actually be able to try to line up that building direction and the distance from that original picture uh, we would try to show you but there's a bunch of houses and things like that in the way now so yeah, and um, we want to be respectful we don't want to film in anybody's windows or anything like that the placard that we visited was actually just uh, basically south of where, where we are currently standing so we did get pretty close with that placard but i think we missed the mark just a little bit originally but the, the great part about that was we still got to see some old buildings and really hone in where this lab used to be. And, you know, kind of like we were saying, just because uh, it's not here doesn't mean it's not abandoned anymore. Just the, the ground that we're on here today, so much happened for history, you know, and technology that we use every day. The camera we're filming with, our the cell phones. phones that we use to get here. I think AC current, the lights that we're using, like everything pretty much is because of Tesla. Yeah, at least his original ideas gave yeah. us the technology that we have today. He, he really was beyond his time, and quite frankly, I think he was ahead of his time if he was born today and yeah. was around today. And, you know, to be able to think, like, that lab sat somewhere on this hill that all this technology, or at least a base idea of where these technologies came from, some of those ideas could have come out of this very lab. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you just think about it, like, that copper ball that sat almost 200 feet in the air on top of the lab might have been right here like at one one night you might have seen lightning just strike right here and that's so cool to think about and something cool about this too is a lot of times in movies it's depicted up in the mountains somewhere which makes sense i think a lot of people think of colorado as just the mountains but it's actually on the plane so if you've seen the movie prestige it's not like that it's more like the newer tesla movie and perhaps at some point we'll talk about both those movies and Maybe some of the accuracies or inaccuracies they've had, or maybe uh, go up to some of those filming locations they did. So we're in the Pioneer Museum and they actually have this artifact from Nikola Tesla. So we're going to zoom in on it and Alan's actually going to tell you a little bit about it. All right, guys. So we're actually in downtown Colorado Springs still at the Pioneer Museum. And we actually found this super cool piece from Tesla's lab. This was a lightning arrester that came out of that shop. And we did actually find out a little bit more information on why that building, that lab, doesn't exist anymore. He was already a very famous um, scientist by the time he got to Colorado Springs in his energy research. What we have learned is that he wasn't actually blowing out the grid or anything like that when he was doing his experiments, but at the same time, he had a lot of unpaid debt, specifically his electric bill. And what happened with this was he basically left and left the debt behind and the lab was torn apart and auctioned off. A bunch of copper wire, insulators, things of that nature got auctioned off to try to bring that debt back down from that electricity bill. 
but it's super awesome to be able to see something that came out of that lab. All right, guys, so we actually have this interactive map here at the museum that we are going to kind of use to show you where you can go. Right here is Memorial Park, and we actually started our journey outside of Memorial Park. And if you kind of come around this side here, Kiowa Street is just up here. This is the edge of the park, and that plaque is actually about right here on Memorial Park. And we started this journey at that plaque and we actually ended up coming all the way around back over here, basically off of South Union, and that is where the, the old printer building is. And we actually ended up coming all the way back down around this way after we found that information about the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind, and that's this right here. And we were actually right here on the corner of East Kiowa Street and Northfoot Ave, and this is the location where that Tesla lab once stood. All right, so we're actually inside the Pioneers Museum in downtown Colorado Springs, and that's because we wanted to come here and try to verify if our location was correct, and it was. It was. He, uh, we were kind of describing where we were at, and you could see his eyes kind of light up, and he's like, that's it, and we're like, hell yeah, we did it. Like, our scavenger hunt worked, so if you watch our video, that is the spot you want to go to. And if you come here, it's a really cool place. We'll actually have a vlog on it at another time or an architectural adventure. But they do have a little small section for Tesla, some blueprints. They also have this newspaper article here that says it is, you know, just up the hill a mile from the School of Deaf and Blind. So that was pretty fascinating. Just spot on where we were. Like we did it. Like mission accomplished. We did find Tesla's lab. And that's what's so amazing is like, you know, anybody could have gone out there and done this if they put a little bit of time and research into it. And, you know, we're, we're big history buffs. We like this kind of stuff. And, you know, it seems like this day and age, more and more people are getting interested in it. And this is a perfect example on how anybody can go do this stuff. And it was awesome. We spent, you know, an afternoon going out there and finding the spot where Tesla's lab once stood. Where it actually where stood. Where it actually stood. And that is just so cool yeah. for people like us to be able to do that. And, you know, we're nothing crazy or special or anything like that. It just goes to show that anybody can go out there and get into this and really do it if they, if they wanted to. And it was awesome, you know. At the very least, we got to spend an afternoon hanging out with friends and, you know, sometimes that's all you need. And like Alan said, it's not super hard. If I can do it in my walking boot, I'm sure you guys can do it as well. I'm like three days out from surgery, so it's nothing too crazy, but it's still that excitement of finding a lost location. Exactly, and we're definitely going to try to start bringing you guys more of these videos again. I know we've kind of let you down a little bit, and we've had a huge gap. We're definitely trying to get back on the ball for you, get some more of these videos out there. So if you would like to see more from Abandoned Colorado, go ahead and click over here. And if you want to see more from us here at Cools Paranormal, click the link here. And don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe. subscribe. And let us know, is there any other Tesla locations you want us to check out?